It's early. It's very early. Oily. Can you guess where we are? <laughs> Yesterday, we took the trouble of doing all seven of the Stoke locks just for you, so that you don't have to do them with us today. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you owe us an ice cream for that. You do. <laughs> All right. We're at the top of the Stoke Bruin locks. And it's lovely, isn't it? It's, been lo it's, it's packed with boats, but it's been so <laughs> quiet. Everybody that we know that's been here has said how nice it is. And when we got here, it's just like, I mean, it's a tiny little village. It is tiny. Yeah. Uh, with like thatched cottages and, and it's, it's really lovely. But the, the whole village seems to centre around the canal. It's like a it's like its own universe down here, isn't it? Yeah, there's lots of gone goozlers when you come through. And you can tell that the villagers are really proud of the canal and how they keep it. Yeah. Uh, behind us is the top lock. And as you come into the top lock, on the left-hand side, uh, you can see what used to be another lock. And it used to be so busy back in the day that they built some of these extra locks to cope with the capacity. That's how busy it must have been. Uh, you come through the lock and then it's like, I won't really describe it as a basin, but it's like, it's where the hub of everything was, yeah. where the wharf was. Uh, on your right hand side as you come up the lock there's an old mill. Uh, it used to grind corn, it had like steam powered machinery that used to grind corn. And I was, do that now, don't I? Yeah, you chew it for gummy parrots, don't you? <laughs> Oh, that closed a few years ago and the Canal and River Trust now own it and it's uh, the Canal Museum. And then next to it there's a row of really lovely pretty cottages. Yes, there is. Uh, and they used to be occupied by the workers of the mill. And some old working boats which we'll tell you a little story about that one a little bit later. Today though, we're going to go back in time. It's like that Kylie record, isn't it? Step, Step back, back in time. time. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm it's too not, early for I'm dancing. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> uh, we're going to go through Blissworth Tunnel. It's the longest self-navigable tunnel in Britain. Uh, Standage Tunnel is the longest. That's a narrow one. Uh, Dudley Tunnel is the second longest, but that's a narrow one. Uh, but this is a wide one, and we're going to go through it today. Not only that, we're going to show you, or tell you, Unless I've got a time machine, I'm going to tie this. <laughs> uh, we're going to show you how it's built. three kilometers about one and three quarter miles long it's 43 meters deep into Blissworth Hill but how did they manage to build a tunnel like that using basic hand tools back in the late 1700s early 1800s and even more mind-boggling how did they manage to get it in a straight line Back in the 1790s, a group of contractors climbed up here onto Blissworth Hill and started hammering wooden posts into the ground. Each one was equally spaced and in direct line of sight with the church at Stoke Bruin. That's how they managed to get the canal path in a straight line. Once the posts had been sunk, they started digging shafts, 21 of them, along the length of the roots of the canal. Each one was calculated so they know how deep to dig them. And the spoil was brought up using buckets and horse gins. Imagine a horse walking around in a circle and it drives a pulley which lifts the spoil out of the tunnel shafts. And it was just left in mounds, as you can see, around each shaft. And over the years, it's difficult to build on that. So little woodlands have appeared where these mounds are and they're a giveaway, a telltale sign when you look from above as to where the original shafts were built. Once all 21 shafts were completed, they dropped a plumb line 
And it was basically two pieces of string and a piece of wood connected at the bottom. And they dropped them from the surface all the way down to the bottom of the shaft in the direction pointing towards the church. And that way, the navvies knew which way to dig. And that's what they started doing. They dug out at each shaft sideways until eventually they all met together. The tunnel was then shaped into an oval shape and lined with bricks to strengthen it. It's amazing to think that a group of navvies and contractors and surveyors using pieces of wood, string, pickaxes, shovels and wheelbarrows could create a three kilometre long tunnel in a straight line that's still around 200 years today. Let's have a go through it. Lisworth Tunnel is a wide tunnel. We can get two narrowboats past each other. Just so we don't meet a wide beam coming the other way. We're stuck if we do. You have to book if you're a wide beam to come through here. Uh, there's no towpath, so in the olden days, the horses used to be walked over Blissworth Hill, usually by the kids, while the men would leg the boat through the tunnel. Now, Leg, do you remember legging? I do, in Dudley. In Dudley. In Dudley. Uh, <laughs> Basically, they'd lay on a plank of wood or, and, and then just leg the boat, push the boat through the tunnel using the legs. Originally, they used to use the barge poles to push the boat through, punting, like you see on the posh boats in Oxford and in Venice. Uh, but that caused damage to the brickwork, so they went back to legging. And there was quite a few fatalities of canal boaters drowning. Really? Uh, yeah, drowning in the water. So the canal company employed a team of professional leggers What's better than a sash, say a professional <laughs> legger? What's what? better than that? What is it? A brass armband. Brass armband? They used to get a brass armband which told them they were a professional legger. I want a brass armband. Yes. When the canal company introduced the steam tugs, it was a big relief for a lot of the leggers. But it put some out of work and a lot of them still legged it anyway because it was just cheaper than using the tug. But you can still see when you look along the roof of the tunnel, all the soot from the steam tugs. The water coming out of the side of the tunnel is actually supposed to be there, it's on purpose. They built what they call water windows and all the water that runs through the hill and through the clay and the stone filters through and it stops the tunnel from buckling under the weight of the water. It's just released through these water windows into the canal. I was talking about the water coming through the hill and not putting pressure on the tunnel and that's why they built the water windows but a lot of the water did start building up and with the movement of the hill as well the tunnel started to change and it started to come in at certain points it got so bad that they had to close it down to navigation and it was shut for a few years but in the early 1980s British Waterways decided to spend some of its money and rebuild part of the tunnel to reopen it again now at the same time plans were being drawn up for the Channel Tunnel between England and France and they tested out the concrete rings that would form part of the Channel Tunnel here at Blissworth.
During the lockdown of 2020, somebody reported that part of the tunnel had moved. There was a sinkhole appearing near one of the ventilation shafts and water was pouring into the tunnel. Now, because it was lockdown, it was difficult to get a boat to come and have a look. So they got Sculptor, remember the old working boat at the top of the locks. And the staff came in, socially distanced, came in to have a look. And luckily it wasn't too serious, so they could keep the tunnel open. But it was ace to see Sculptor coming in to the rescue. It's an old uh, boat built in 1935. And it used to be owned by the Grand Union Canal Carrying Company. But in World War II, it was taken down to London and fitted with pumps. And they used it to put fires out from all the bombing during the Second World War. Uh, it was retired in the 1980s and it sits as part of the museum as an exhibit now and it's looked after by the volunteers. What a hero boat, mm, legend. Ab absolutely. As you're getting older, when you laugh like that, your, your jaw kind of comes out at the bottom. <laughs> and you have a look of Elmer Fudd. <laughs> uh, that's the Blissworth Tunnel done. Uh, it took us about 25 minutes, and coincidentally, the sign says it should take you about 25 minutes, which is handy. You do get a little bit wet in there. It's not as wet as some of the other tunnels we've been through, is it? No, it's not. I think uh, wettest one was Standage. <laughs> Standage is just, the, I mean, they could transfer Standage to Walton Towers <laughs> and sell those capes at a pound a go. Yeah, they, they could, just, yeah. It's, it's like that. Uh, but it's a really nice tunnel. And I think the fact that it's quite wide, wide enough to fit two narrowboats through, makes it feel less claustrophobic. Yeah. Uh, and then the new part where they use the same concrete rings as there is in the Channel Tunnel. If you want to go and have a look at one of the rings, the concrete rings that they used on the South Portal, just uh, before you go through the South Portal, on your right hand side next to the old blacksmith's building, uh, you can actually see one of the concrete rings and it looks twice as big when it's like laid there in the grass than it does when it's in the tunnel, it's, it's a bit weird. Uh, we've reset, uh, Otis has come back out, he was fast asleep in the boat during that. Yes. Having his morning nap, so he's had his wee and his second poo. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Uh, and now we're on his way to Blissworth. Yes. Just coming up to Bridge 51, and on our left-hand side, just after it, is the old Blissworth Mill. Uh, it used to be owned by the Grand Union Canal Carrying Company, and in the Second World War it was requisitioned and they stored tons, hundreds of tons, of tin food rations. I wonder if they had spaghetti oops. No, they weren't invented till 1965. How do you know that? I have a sneaky read of your book sometimes when you're not looking. Bridge 50 is called Candle Bridge and it's named after a lady who used to live in a cottage right there. It's hidden by the trees and I didn't want to get a shot because then you'd be like, what you got a shot of trees for? As one tree looks like another. <laughs> That's her from Darwin. <laughs> uh, so it's called Candle Bridge because a lady used to live in that cottage and she used to sell candles to the leggers who were going towards Blitzworth Tunnel so they could have a little bit of light while they were in the tunnel. Yeah. There you go, that's the useless information for today. <laughs> I 
I waited until we got past Gate and Junction before I told you that that was Gate and Junction. Okay. And, and if we'd have done a right turn, we would have gone down the Northampton Arm. Uh, five miles, 17 locks, and it would have taken us down to the River Neen. Oh, I know where that goes. Now in my head, the River Neen should lead to the River Nunu. <laughs> oh. You all right? <coughs> River Nunu, uh, which leads to the wash. Now, if you don't know what the wash is, uh, neither does Sean. Uh, I'm I want kidding. to do the He wash. is very clean. That's what I liked about him when I first met him, how clean you were. <laughs> that was one of the first things I know. I mean, you had horrible brown trousers and shoes on, but you were clean, <laughs> and I liked that. Uh, the wash is like, it's basically the sea. It's the North Sea. Well, it's the wash, uh, but it's in the North Sea. It's a big bay, isn't it? Yeah, and it's how you get to the Norfolk Broads, but we don't want to go there yet. No. Never say never, but not today. River Nunu. <laughs> The speed limit on canals is four miles an hour, but most boaters generally cruise at around three miles an hour or less. I know we do. The banks are very delicate in places and they're home to loads of wildlife. Plus, going too fast can cause moored boats to rock about and it can even pull out mooring pins. You've seen the breaking wave that this guy is creating. He's going way above the speed limit and despite us asking him, he refused to slow down. He didn't even think he was going too fast. I wonder how many fragile nests he's destroyed today. You always imagine the Grand Union Canal as being this like long, really muscly length of waterway. Uh, like all the industry and oh, all the industry and smoke and coal and things like that and you, you tend to forget it's easy to forget about these long stretches like 10 11 miles of just nothingness just trees and fields and and it's lovely isn't it it is what are you laughing at nothing although you do see a lot of the like remnants of the old style Grand Union Canal uh, but that's it for today. Uh, there's a bridge just back there. So Bridge uh, 41. Yeah, Bridge 41. I think there's a bus every Wednesday. So you <laughs> might be able to get yourself home on that. But, uh, but we're off towards Braunston. I don't know if you'll see us before we get there. They'll have to wait and see, won't they? Yeah, you will. <laughs> uh, but we're going to carry on for now. We hope you've enjoyed your trip with us today, uh, especially through the tunnel. Maybe learnt a couple of things. I know Sean has. <laughs> and uh, if you've enjoyed the vlog and you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. That helps us a lot. Uh, give the vlog a thumbs up. Hit the like button. That would be great. And if you hit the notifications bell, uh, YouTube will let you know every time we release a new vlog by notifying you on your app. Not by email anymore. No. As so many people keep telling us, it's not our fault. Write to Mr. YouTube. <laughs> He'll tell you. <laughs> if you want to support the channel, there's a join button on the homepage uh, of any of our YouTube pages, or you can click the Patreon link. Spitting, I'm so excited. Which is just up above Sean's head. Are we going to Braunston? No, we're not going to Braunston. We've been saying we're not going to Braunston forever. <laughs> Find out next week if we do. Take care. See you later. Ta -da. Right, off we go. You've got to start again anyway. Why? So we're right in the middle of the lens. Or is it a, it's nice no, it's a shadow. Reflection. But how did they manage? It's three kilometres. Unbelievable. No, that's it cuts to me on top of the hill. Okay. Yeah, I like a mouthful, but not like that. And blah 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 blah. Blah blah blah. <coughs> we had to release it as a single. Could do. Didn't we? We could have like a Christmas number one. <laughs> You have several Christmas number twos, don't you? <laughs> if we'd have gone down, that right answer, yeah, 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 start again, shall we? <laughs> Wasn't it? <laughs> you've never been down the Northampton Arm, have you? No. I took you up the Lancaster, but you've never been down the Northampton Arm. <laughs> well, we're going to leave you here. In fact, no, we're going to come back and do it again when the washer stops spinning.